I'll give the sister with learning disabilities to your mother. That's how Natsuki arrogantly behaves. It's unbelievable how much hatred can bubble up inside me. This person does not love her child. She sees her only as a tool to make money. My anger towards her has reached its peak and I've decided to take her granddaughter away from Natsuki. If you're going to be like that, I will take care of the child myself. Under the condition that Natsuki would no longer be involved with her granddaughter, I decided to take her in and go through with an adoption. Ten years later, Natsuki realized her mistake after a certain event and was filled with regret. My name is Takako. I work as a proofreader, checking for errors in manuscripts and proofs for books and magazines at a publishing house. My husband is a film director, involved in a wide range of projects from anime to Japanese and horror movies, and is well known as a skilled director. We, a creative couple, have one son. Our son grew up to be a fine eldest son, found a wonderful woman, and got married. They were blessed with children and lived happily. But soon after getting married, our son was involved in an unfortunate accident and passed away. Losing our only son, my husband and I were drowned in sorrow. I believe it was even harder for Natsuki, our daughter-in-law. At the young age of 33, Natsuki became a widow and raised two daughters on her own. Furthermore, the daughters are twins, with the younger one, Ami, showing signs of learning disabilities, while her sister, Rina, does not. At first, Ami's condition was diagnosed as mild, but as they grew, her disabilities became more apparent, and now they both attend the same elementary school, with Ami in a special education class. Raising a child with disabilities is no small feat, especially for Natsuki, who lost her husband early on. Of course, my husband and I have tried to support Natsuki in every way possible. Natsuki also works, and when she can't take care of the kids at night, we've looked after our granddaughters at our place. Still, the hardship she's faced after our son's death is unimaginable. I truly respect Natsuki for everything she's done. She really did cherish her daughters. That was until Natsuki fell for a certain man. Meeting this man, Natsuki changed completely. Mom, I'm taking Rina to piano lessons, so I'm dropping off Ami with you now. I'll be there in about five minutes. This was a sudden call, without any prior notice. Natsuki used to inform me in advance, showing consideration for my schedule, but lately, she's come up abruptly. Despite knowing her piano lesson schedules in advance. She started calling out of the blue, wanting to drop off Ami without any prior discussion. Of course, both my husband and I have work. Making requests without prior confirmation can be inconvenient for us. Natsuki, I admire your dedication to Rina, but it's difficult for us when you suddenly impose on us every time. Eh? But aren't you off today, mom? The calendar mentioned you're off every Tuesday this month, right? Because she frequently brings the grandchildren over, Natsuki knows everything from our work to our family situation. It felt invasive and uncomfortable. Even on days off, we have plans that can only be done then. Please stop dropping her off without notice. It's not that we don't want to take care of her. But it's troubling when you leave her with us without any discussion. Understood. I'll be more careful next time. After a pause, Natsuki replied reluctantly. At the same time, I could hear a faint click of her tongue. And before I could respond, she hung up the phone unilaterally. Shortly after, I heard Natsuki's car stop at the entrance. Suppressing my exasperation, I headed to the entrance. Then, I heard something unacceptable from the direction of the entrance. Ami, just go to grandma's by yourself. Hearing Natsuki's forceful words to Ami from the entrance, I was stunned and speechless. Moreover, I heard the car door close only once. Meaning, Natsuki instructed Ami from inside the car without getting out and then drove off again. Shocked and in disbelief, I hurried to the entrance to greet her. And there, I found Ami left all alone at the entrance. Ami. Where's your mom? Where did she go? Ami, not understanding the situation, stared back at me with a puzzled look. I placed both hands on Ami's shoulders and asked her what happened, but she just looked at me curiously without answering my questions. Grandma. Good evening. Ami is in elementary school but has delayed speech. She can communicate in two-word phrases at best. 
so, she can't respond to complex questions. When bombarded with questions, she often gets tongue-tied. At this moment, unable to grasp the meaning of my questions, Ami, contrary to my anxious feelings, smiled at me with a charming grin. Ami, where's your mom? Shopping? Piano lessons? Which one did she go to? When talking to Ami, I mustn't get too emotional. Rushing her with words can cause her to panic because she picks up on that stress. So, I took a deep breath first to calm my own feelings. Then, I presented choices with my fists, making it easier for Ami to answer by giving her a binary option. Thanks to this, Ami seemed to understand the question, pointing at one of my fists, and uttered something surprising. Piano, went with Rina and a man. A man? That word caught my attention, and I inadvertently asked Ami eagerly. Is that person mom's friend? Rina's friend? No. Mom's boyfriend. Seeing Ami say this with a happy smile made my heart ache terribly. So, Natsuki left her daughter behind to go to Rina's piano lessons with a new man. But why leave Ami behind? The answer to that would soon become clear. That evening, as the time for piano lessons to end approached and it was time for pickup, Natsuki did not come home. Fortunately, it was Saturday tomorrow, so there was no school, and looking after Ami at home wasn't an issue, but it was still incredibly irresponsible. To leave her with us without any notice. What on earth happened to Natsuki? I repeated these compliments in my mind while waiting with Ami for Natsuki to come for her. We were yet to realize that Natsuki's life had already spiraled out of control. Hello, mom? I'm sorry to ask, but can Ami stay over tonight? Rina's come down with a fever. I don't want Ami to catch it, so I was hoping she could stay with you. The call came after 9 p.m. Ami had finished her bath and dinner, and we were just waiting for Natsuki to pick her up. Natsuki's voice over the phone didn't sound hurried, and she spoke with an apologetic tone. Without knowing the situation, one might not have doubted her words. However, having heard the story from Ami earlier, I couldn't easily believe what Natsuki was saying. It's fine. We'll take care of her tonight. Noticing my hesitation, my husband, who had been playing with Ami, looked over and said this with a stern expression. So, I told Natsuki that we would keep Ami for the night, as my husband suggested. I understand the situation. But you knew about this earlier, didn't you? How many hours has it been since the piano lessons ended? I'm so sorry. I was just about to pick her up when I noticed Rina wasn't feeling well. I'll be more careful next time. Her unapologetic response only added to my irritation. From now on, please make sure to inform us in advance. Without prior notice, it will be difficult for us to take her in the future. Okay. Thank you so much. She replied in a sugary sweet voice, as if acting cute, and then she hung up the phone unilaterally. I was so astounded that I couldn't find the words to respond. I returned to Ami and my husband, bracing myself for the challenge ahead. Ami, let's spend today with grandma and grandpa. Mommy had to stay with Rina because she's sick and couldn't come to pick you up. Perhaps my choice of words wasn't the best, as Ami, who had been set on the idea of going home, became upset when her routine was broken. Ami, thrown into a panic, became restless, wandering around and starting to cry, wanting to go home. She curled up on the spot, trying to calm herself down, but seemingly unable to switch her emotions, she kept sitting down and standing up repeatedly. Eventually, she collapsed onto a nearby sofa and began to cry loudly. I'm sorry. It's my fault. It's okay. Let's support Ami right now. We've encountered situations like this before. When Ami was younger, her tantrums were much worse, becoming uncontrollable at times. She would hit us, bang her head against the wall, and slap her hands on the floor, which was truly a terrible state compared to now. However, as she grew up, Ami seemed to mature, and her symptoms showed signs of calming down. Whenever Ami gets like this, my husband and I stay by her side. We never initiate physical contact or try to do anything. Ami uses our hands to calm herself down, wiping away her tears with them. It seems touching us reassures her, but we must not reach out first. Ami has her own timing and needs, and it's important to respond to them. 
This is something we've learned over the past six years. I'm sorry. After calming down, Ami always apologizes to us for some reason. She looks at us with tearful eyes, trembling as if afraid, possibly thinking she'll be scolded for crying. At this time, we had no idea this was due to the terrible treatment she received from Natsuki. I'm not angry. In fact, I'm the one who should apologize, right? I said something horrible to Ami. Good girl. Good girl. Even though she couldn't understand my words, she must have read my emotions from my facial expression. Seeing me downcast, Ami gently stroked my head. Despite her difficulty with words, this child has such a kind heart. So what if she has a disability? That's just part of her unique character. I love this gentle side of her. Smiling at these thoughts, my husband's suggestion to go to bed allowed Ami to switch to sleep mode, and she happily went to the bedroom with him. The next morning, Rina with a grimace and Natsuki in a slovenly, annoyed manner came to pick her up. Thank you for yesterday. Rina's fever seems to have completely gone after a night's rest, you really saved us. Natsuki said this in a way that almost seemed to have a heart mark at the end of her sentence, without any sign of remorse for the previous night. Next to her, Rina had a somehow sulky expression on her face. I wondered what had happened. I wanted to ask, but seeing her mother, Ami's eyes lit up, and she ran to hug Natsuki, leaving me unable to say anything. Mom, I'm home. Ami. Welcome back. Let's go home, shall we? Natsuki responded to Ami's hug. The moment I saw Natsuki's smile, I felt something was off. It seemed like she made a slightly disgusted face at Ami, if only for a moment. It was so brief I couldn't be sure if what I saw was accurate. Given what happened yesterday, it might have just appeared that way to me. But even if I wasn't certain, the feeling of discomfort was there, preventing me from voicing my concerns. Well then, we'll be off now. As Natsuki said this and took Ami's hand to head to the car, Rina, with a grim face, came to me and handed over a letter. Read this after we've gone. She whispered, handing me the letter in a way that Natsuki couldn't hear. From Rina's demeanor, it was clear that this was no trivial matter. I didn't ask Rina anything further and silently accepted the letter. After watching Natsuki and her daughters leave, I called my husband into the living room and we read Rina's letter together. The content of the letter was shocking. Mom has changed since she found a new boyfriend. She's hardly ever at home and gives him money. She's been giving the money I won from piano competitions and the rewards from concerts to him. She leaves Ami with grandma because that man dislikes Ami. And now, mom has started to find Ami annoying. She might try to leave Ami with you again soon. Please, help Ami. I'll be okay. Just look after Ami. The letter's content was unbelievable and surprising. At the end of the letter, there seemed to be an email address written down. I recalled Natsuki mentioning that Rina's piano talent blossomed as she entered elementary school and her lessons became even busier. Despite her youth, Rina has attracted media attention for her skills. Now, she is considered a prodigy in the piano world, a rising star attracting nationwide attention. With things being so dangerous lately, I decided to give her a cell phone. It seems pretty normal for elementary students to have one these days, so I thought it wouldn't be a problem. As a parent of a child who's in the public eye, it's only natural to be concerned and take precautions for their safety. It's amazing how times have changed, I thought casually. So, knowing that Rena had a cell phone, I understood this address was hers. Rena has always been quick-witted, even for her young age. Writing down her cell phone contact meant she wasn't being monitored in her communications. This implied it was safe to contact her this way, and I felt sure about it. Therefore, I trusted this email address belonged to Rena and decided to reach out. Good evening, am I correct in assuming this is Rena's address? Yes, it is. You read my letter, didn't you? Thank you. Grandma, please help Ami. The reply came just after 10 p.m., likely when she had returned to her room for the night. From there, Rena and I exchanged several messages. Can you explain in detail what you meant in that letter? Also, make sure to delete our email exchange, okay? Sure. I wasn't really sick yesterday. 
It was all a lie so mom could go see that man. I was left at a piano friend's house while mom went out with him. He's like a musician, and mom has been chasing after him. She's been spending my competition winnings and concert earnings on him. But I'm okay with it. However, Ami. Ami is treated horribly by mom at home. Ami doesn't understand and is always smiling, but after being scolded, she ends up crying uncontrollably. Mom cares more about that man now than us. If I give mom money, she's in a good mood. But as long as Ami is around, mom will continue to treat her harshly. That man said we should just leave Ami with you guys. Maybe Ami would be happier with you than at home with mom. So please, help Ami. I'll do anything for her sake. Reading the email to the end, I couldn't stop my tears. A six-year-old girl desperately trying to protect her sister. And to think, she's willing to sacrifice herself. What a terrible mother to make her young daughter say such things. But what about you? If things stay the same, who knows what might happen to you too. I'll be fine. As long as I can play the piano, mom will need me. If push comes to shove, I'll threaten to quit piano. Besides, I want to get even better at playing. If it means using them to my advantage, I will. That guy seems to have connections in the music industry, so I'll make the most of it. So, don't worry about me. But please, take care of Ami. I can't protect her on my own. Can she really be only six years old? Her message was so mature it made me wonder. Rina is truly strong. But the future's uncertain. She must not push herself too hard. If Rina ever finds it tough, she must promise to rely on us. And to ensure we don't lose contact. I promised these three things and agreed to help Rina. A month later, Natsuki's irresponsible behavior continued, and my husband and I were constantly being inconvenienced. But preventing anything from happening to Ami was a priority. So, we started to insist on looking after Ami ourselves, for her safety and to keep our promise to Rina. After about a month of this new arrangement, Natsuki came to our house with Ami, saying she had something to ask. Actually, I might be going abroad soon. What? Rina's piano teacher highly praised her talent and might get her an opportunity to be seen by a famous teacher in Italy. If she succeeds, she's guaranteed to become a world-renowned pianist. So, if that happens, I was hoping you could take care of Ami. Taking Ami abroad with me is just not feasible. I couldn't help but doubt Natsuki's story. Because Rina hadn't mentioned anything like this to me. There was no talk of going abroad, and there was no reason for her to keep such important news a secret. I couldn't trust Natsuki's words and looked at her skeptically. Could you take Ami to the living room? I'd like to have a word with Natsuki alone. My husband seemed to understand from my expression and left the living room with Ami. Tell me the truth. Huh? The story about Rina going abroad doesn't just come up suddenly, does it? Plus, a friend told me they saw you walking in town with a man while Ami was left with us. If you're planning to keep up these pointless secrets, we will have to take action. What's really going on? Give me a straight answer. The story about my friend seeing her was a lie, but I thought it necessary to shake Natsuki's resolve to get to the truth. If you know everything, then just say it. There was no need for such an act. What? I was taken aback by her sudden change in demeanor. I couldn't believe that this person in front of me, with such an unbelievable tone and attitude, was the kind Natsuki I knew. To be clear, Ami is in the way. Just having a child with developmental issues significantly lowers my chances of remarrying. While Rina does compensate for the negative aspects to some extent, being a mother to a child with disabilities still turns potential partners away. So, for my and Rina's happiness, I want you to take Ami. It would be better for Rina to have a stepfather, and it's better for my mental state too. Far from being remorseful, Natsuki spoke nonchalantly. I was speechless at her words, unable to comprehend. Then, she said something even more shocking. In short, I'm giving Ami, who has developmental issues, to you. Having Rina is enough for me. You were happy to have a grandchild, right? A useless burden only strains the household finances. I couldn't recognize Natsuki as a person anymore, hearing her speak so lightly of such matters. 
Despite everything, Ami loves her mother. For Ami, her mother is everything, and no matter how badly she's treated, Ami loves her mother deeply. Thinking about Ami's pure and earnest love, Natsuki's words and attitude infuriated me. But I didn't feel like arguing back. Because for us, Ami is the precious legacy of our son. Rather than being raised by such a careless, worthless mother, we wanted to take care of her and make her happy. With that thought, I calmed myself and responded to her statement. In that case, I'll take care of Ami. But in return, you will never see Ami again. We'll tell her that her mother has passed away. For her sake, don't ever claim to be her mother again or appear in front of her. Yeah, yeah, whatever you want. If I can get rid of such a useless child, do as you please. Saying this, Natsuki stretched her arms up high, seemingly relieved. Without saying anything to Ami, she left our house. Thus, Ami became our adopted child. The initial period was tumultuous. Losing her mother caused Ami to become distraught, placing a tremendous emotional burden on her. We reached out to a doctor acquaintance and had specialists come to our home to help mend Ami's mental state. Thanks to coordination with a therapeutic facility, Ami was able to return to school and resume a normal life within a few months. Ten years later, an incident occurred. The doorbell rang persistently in the afternoon. It was a holiday, and we were enjoying a rare family day at home. Who could that be, ringing the bell so many times? Annoyed by the impolite visit, I went to the door and grimaced upon seeing the visitor through the peephole. I know you're in there. Give back Ami, you family of thieves. There stood Natsuki and her rumored boyfriend, whom we had cut ties with ten years ago, dressed in an overly flashy manner. What's going on? Why is it so noisy at the door? What should we do? Natsuki has somehow found our address and just showed up unexpectedly. What? When we cut ties with Natsuki, we moved to start anew, buying a place in a prime area of the city due to our jobs, never imagining she would find us. My husband and I exchanged worried looks, wondering what to do. It's okay, Grandma, Grandpa. That's her, isn't it? I want to settle things once and for all, so it's all right to let her in. Ami was now 16 years old. Since then, her developmental issues had stabilized, and she had successfully learned to communicate. Now, she can converse normally. Although she still has intense fixations and can get absorbed in activities without noticing her surroundings, those traits have helped her succeed in a certain venture. You're late. If you knew I was here, you could have let me in sooner. Natsuki had changed completely from when she lived with her son, exhibiting an aggressive demeanor as soon as she entered the house, sitting down on the sofa next to her boyfriend with a confrontational attitude. She crossed her arms and legs, glaring at us to show her displeasure. While I disliked her attitude, I knew better than to rise to her provocation. After taking a deep breath to maintain my composure, we sat down across from them and asked what they wanted. There's no reason for us to let someone unrelated into our home now. What do you want after all this time? We severed ties with you ten years ago. Ami was sitting at a nearby workbench, absorbed in her writing, thankfully oblivious to the surrounding noise and our argument. Natsuki, noticing Ami's focused state, smirked oddly and made a shocking declaration. It's simple. I've come to take back Ami. She's my daughter, so it's my right to have her back, isn't it? My husband, with a stern face, spoke in a low voice to Natsuki. You said you didn't want Ami and abandoned her. We agreed that Ami was told her mother had died. Wasn't that the end of it? That was just a verbal agreement. Besides, Ami should know I'm alive from the letters, right? If her mother is alive, there's no reason for us to live apart, is there? Natsuki's retort, filled with entitlement, angered me. Do you have any idea how much your selfish actions have hurt Ami? For Ami, who had been told her mother was dead, Natsuki's actions only served to tumultuously stir her emotions. Knowing her mother was alive had once disturbed her to the point she couldn't attend school. Thankfully, with the help of her friends and a particular child, Ami managed to regain her composure and return to her normal life. I'm telling you I'll take proper care of her now. So, give Ami back to me already. Cut it out already. Natsuki aggressively insisted we hand over Ami without any further argument. 
It was Ami herself who interrupted her. Ami, shaking with anger, threw her pen narrowly missing Natsuki's face and marched up to confront her. You never cared about me. I was just in the way when you wanted to be with that man, so you dumped me with grandma and grandpa. And now you're pretending to be a mother? Don't make me laugh. I've never thought of you as my mother. The young Emmy we knew could never have spoken like this. No matter what her mother did, she always accepted it with a smile, never showing any sign of anger. But living with us, Ami changed. She grew emotionally expressive, learning to express herself thanks to therapy, school teachers, and friends. She learned to distinguish right from wrong. Ami honed her talents to spite the mother who abandoned her. There was no way she could forgive Natsuki, who had discarded her for a new life with a man. But Natsuki was unaware that we knew all this because she didn't know Rina had betrayed her. I figured you'd come for me eventually, knowing how greedy you are for money. You're only here because you found out I'm making money from manga, right? That I'm the author behind that movie? At those words, a look of shock crossed Natsuki's face. We had exposed Ami to a lot since then. Natsuki had wanted Ami to play the piano like Rina, but when Ami didn't show interest and thus no financial potential, Natsuki decided to abandon her, the truth we learned from Rina. We encouraged Ami to explore various activities, embracing anything she showed interest in and taking her wherever she wanted to go. This approach helped Ami blossom in one particular area, drawing. Ami had an exceptional sense of aesthetics. Her imagination was beyond what we anticipated. Involved in the anime industry, my husband and I were convinced her work was exceptional. Her art caught the attention of a renowned figure in the industry, someone with awards named after him. With his endorsement, Ami's manga was instantly accepted by our publishing editor. It led to anime adaptation and even a movie deal. Ami's talent flourished, proving her genius in no time. Now that I'm a successful manga artist, I'm worth more than Rina ever was to you. You thought you could use me too, didn't you? To pay off the debts from the money you spend on that man and your gambling? Too bad for you, we're aware of all your misdeeds. Who would want to return to a toxic parent like you now? Get out. My real family is my grandma, grandpa, and dad. Taken aback by Ami's unexpected words, Natsuki couldn't hide her turmoil. We had no idea how Ami came to know so much, as we hadn't shared it with her. Amid the confusion, the man beside Natsuki showed anger towards Ami for standing up to them. How dare you speak to your parent who gave birth to you like that? Did I ask to be born? You just had me and then abandoned me when it suited you. It's you who came back when you needed something, driven only by your greed for money. I don't want anything to do with a mother like you now. Who would go back to a vile woman like you? Just get out of here. Your mere presence disgusts me. Shocked and lost for words at being defied, Natsuki stood frozen. The man beside her stood up angrily, looking as if he was about to lash out at Ami. Just as we were about to intervene, a voice from the entrance of the living room stopped us. If you do that, I'll show this video to the police and have you thrown in jail right away. Are you okay with that? Hearing this, everyone's gaze turned towards the entrance. There stood Rina, who was supposed to be in Italy, holding up her phone camera. Why is Rina here? I thought you were in Italy. I asked my teacher to reschedule my lessons. I suspected you would try to contact Ami in my absence and eventually try to take her back. It was good that I'd been in touch with Ami all along. Just as I thought, you showed up here at Grandma's. Saying this, Rina walked over to Ami, continuing to film the man as if to protect Ami. It was Rina who had been explaining everything to Ami and protecting her all this time. Rina had used the man beside Natsuki as she had said, leveraging his connections in the music industry to possibly get to the overseas pianist she admired. She was willing to spare no expense for her dream, and she had a plan to eventually leave Natsuki. This is the investment for my dream. So, it's not a burden at all. Besides, those people are so clueless they don't even know I've secretly opened a savings account with grandma's help. The money I've given them is just a fraction of my earnings, so don't worry. Having started studying about money and law upon entering middle school, Rina now possesses knowledge that rivals adults, and she seems to have shared her family situation with her work contacts. 
her agency has been fully supportive, allowing Rena to accumulate enough savings in her account to live on her own. Now that her dream has materialized and she has secured a place to live, Rena told Ami she considers Natsuki and her accomplices unnecessary and wants to distance herself from them. I've decided to be adopted by grandma and grandpa. What did you say? Natsuki was visibly shaken by this unforeseen development. The man beside her, equally unprepared for this turn of events, was flustered, pressing Natsuki about what they would do next. I've given you plenty of good times, so you should be satisfied by now. Having dead weight around would only hinder my rise to even greater success. Rina and I have always considered ourselves without a mother, so rest assured. So, don't ever show up in front of us again. I've already discussed the adoption with grandma and grandpa. All that's needed is your consent, but since I doubt that will happen, I've asked a lawyer to handle it. Thinking about finally being able to live with Rina makes me so happy. Well, I live elsewhere, so we won't meet often, but considering what we've been through, that's nothing. Now we can enjoy so many things together again. As the two of them chatted away happily, Natsuki, having witnessed this, furiously reached for my collar. It's you, isn't it? You're the one who filled Rina with these unnecessary ideas. Rina quickly stepped in to protect me, aiming her camera at Natsuki. Don't get it twisted. I made this proposal to grandma and grandpa on my own accord. You thought I was on your side, so you never suspected me. I always comforted you, didn't I? But… I've never once thought of you as my mother. To me and Ami, our parents are our deceased dad, and grandma and grandpa who still love us. Natsuki, never having faced defiance from either of them before, looked like it was the end of the world for her, collapsing weakly onto the sofa, unable to accept the reality. All this time, Ami has been reaching out for you. To Natsuki, showing such a pitiful state, I delivered the final blow. Despite seeking a mother's love time and again, you pushed her away yourself. You, lost in men, have no right to call yourself a parent. Ami and Rina will be cherished and raised by my husband and me. You are forbidden from ever approaching them again. You are no longer anything to Ami and Rina. Upon hearing this, Natsuki broke down crying. She begged Ami and Rina repeatedly, but her pleas fell on deaf ears. When they expressed their wish to have Natsuki and the man expelled, my husband drove them away. Their persistent lingering led to a stern warning that we would call the police, which finally scared them off. After several more attempts by Natsuki and the man to reclaim the two, their persistent nuisance drove Ami to report them to the police. Under stalking legislation, they were prohibited from approaching Ami, ensuring her safety. This allowed us to successfully sever ties with Natsuki for good. The lingering unease was finally cleared, allowing Ami and Rina to live freely and happily. Rina has become a world-renowned pianist, having met her fate overseas, now performing concerts worldwide with her violinist lover. And as for Ami, her manga turned into a movie became a global hit. It's even hailed as a representative work of Japanese anime abroad. Now, she is a celebrated manga artist. My husband and I sometimes contribute to Ami's projects, and now our family unites to support her lifestyle.